All right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Hope you're doing well, and welcome back to another Rome 2 Siege Battle. This is the continuation of the Total War League Rome 2 Siege Tournament. Uh, this is game two between Gorilla Boys and Winged Wumsars. So if you missed the first game, it's linked down in the video description. I also have a playlist uh, that you can uh, you can watch that has all the tournament battles. Now, this is only the second one, so there's only two battles in there right now. But of course, don't forget to join the TWL official Discord. And also, don't forget uh, to follow other YouTubers who are covering the different groups in the tournament. Now, remember, I'm covering Group C. And within this group, we've got the Gorilla Boys and the Winged, winged Wumsars. Now, in the last battle, spoiler alert, stop the video if you haven't seen it. Uh, in the last battle, the Gorilla Boys uh, were victorious with a beautiful Sally Out battle. They earned six points in that first victory and in this battle of course the gorilla boys are going to be on the attack now if they win this one right here so macedon zero points lusitani so those are the two factions they're playing as lusitani is plus two so they get plus five points now on the defense uh we have sparta and we also have rdi I thought you couldn't play Sparta on defense. I thought they were an attack-only faction, but uh, it, I, I'm, I could be wrong. But their points is... Uh, so if they win, they'll get a total of four points, which is a big chunk of points here. So if they do win here, um, that's going to be a, you know, a nice little... Even though they lost the first battle, they can still kind of get some points here. So this is going to be a pretty important victory for them. Now, as you can tell, the Gorilla Boys are actually attacking this side of the settlement. Which is interesting because a lot of players, most of them are attacking this side. So maybe they see something they like here. Maybe they've got a strategy and they're hoping that the uh, opponents didn't plan for it. Now, right away, you can also see that they have uh, set up all their siege equipment with Vanguard troops. So now they're just rushing forward to man the, the equipment and they're going to go ahead and attack the walls. Sure enough, this is classic strat here using all these tortoises. Tortoises are just, like, so vital in a siege battle. If you don't have tortoises, you're really going to struggle. Because attacking the walls with just siege towers is so difficult. Now, uh, if the Gorilla Boys win this one... And again, just to remind you guys, Gorilla Boys are on attack. Masadon Lusitani here. If they win this one, they will finish this matchup. Because this is the last game of the matchup. They will finish with 11 points. That is going to give them a huge head start in this grouping. And remember, of the each, there's a, I think there's five teams in each group. And there's, I think, five groups. Uh, but the top two teams of each group uh, are going to make it uh, into the playoffs. So this is going to give them a huge, huge head start. Uh, and it's going to make it more difficult, if they win, that is, uh, more difficult for the other teams to catch up. Which is including my team. Uh, which you're going to see my battles with Ruvac. Um, you're going to see our team battles after this one. So I think a couple days after this battle. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but anyways, as you can see, they're breaking down the walls. Nothing really too much is going on tactically. Uh, other than, you know, their positioning here of, the, of this specific wall. And it does look like they are going to send forward some troops. And the defenders are going to gladly meet them. Now, it does appear... Well, maybe not. we got some mercenary Celtic warriors from RDI. But it, it does appear that they might give up this tower. Which is kind of surprising. This is a pretty, pretty nasty tower. They can rack up some good kills. Let's see. Yeah, he's just going to move up and contest it. Let's see if he just charges in here or he just sets up a nice column formation. Now, I wonder if that... You see that maneuver there, how he charges in as a column? I wonder if that's more effective against enemy Javis. Like, if they don't kill as many in one volley. I'm not really sure. Either he charged in, a, in column formation on purpose, or it's just the nature of the pathfinding. Or he just likes column formation on attack. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, he's going to go in with some Thorax Hordes, followed by some Militia Hoplites. 
These hoplites are, you know, they're not really expected to get to rack up a ton of kills. But they're basically used to push up the siege equipment and kind of take the, uh, the initial uh, arrow tower fire as they advance. And now we've got our stand here of the, uh, the um, Spartans. Sorry, I'm having a brain fart here. The Spartans using the uh, Spartan hoplites. So, yeah, of course, Sparta is very good at this. They're very good at holding. And that is obviously what they're going to do. Now, the, the issue, though... Is that you got to be careful because if the attackers can get behind, like right here, they can shoot their arrows, shoot their, you know, whatever projectile they have at the flank of the Spartans as they hold the front line. And it doesn't appear that they are going to defend this area. So, uh, yeah, they're going to let them take. And that's the challenge of this. Like, that's something you can't really let happen. You kind of you gotta have to hold a little bit here. But we'll see. Maybe the defenders have a good defense here, a good strategy that they're going to plan. Now back over this way, we've got a little bit of a stalemate between the hoplites. I can imagine the militia, militia hoplites are probably pretty afraid of these Spartans. I would be. Look at these guys. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's just it's so aesthetically pleasing, these, these uh, Spartans. Like, they just look so cool. And there we go. They actually push forward to engage. They gotta be careful because they don't want to get flanked, and his teammates gonna rush in and, and join the fight. So there you go. And they're actually gonna kind of like go through this gap here and fight these Iberian swordsmen. Now we got uh, some Marines moving up who have some good projectile capabilities. Yeah, this faction, the RDI, are considered minus one because, I assume, because of their projectile capability. They're just very good with with projectiles. So, um, And I think they base these scores on, like, statistics of, like, how well the faction performed in previous tournaments. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's... I think, I think that's how they came up with the points, if I'm not mistaken. Also, with just, like, understanding the faction and seeing what they have and what they don't have. So, yeah, this RDI faction is minus one, and then the Spartans are plus three. So, they get plus two for defending, plus three, which is five, and then minus one. So, a total of four, like I said earlier in the in the video. But the Spartans are doing a good job here. They're holding the best they can. They have 38 kills, which is not a ton. But uh, that's not really their job. Their job is to hold. And, oh, we're getting some artillery coming in. Look at this. Oh, yeah. The Greek giant ballista. Going in and popping some shots. He's going after the, the rear, I assume, the rear guard or the reserve, I should say, of these Marines. <clears throat> so that's always a good target to go for. Always try to soften them up from afar. And uh, the RDI troops here, the Celtic Warriors, already breaking against so many militia hoplites. There are some Thorax swords in the mix as well. So but they do break them there. And now here comes the assault on the other side. Notice how, notice how RDI has a, a set of forces here kind of defending this position because what could happen is that the attackers could use this wall, go all the way down, and then go down the stairs, which could be a big problem. Also, they, you know, you, you want to maintain the tower because the towers do rack up a lot of kills. Those are, those are worth fighting for, for sure. So Sparta continuously... Holds their ground again. This is what they're, this is what they're known for, you know, holding and uh, fighting the good fight. And they're actually breaking some militia. Again, not surprising here whatsoever. This is militia hoplite. They're not gonna, you know, kill everything. And here comes a nice gap push by the thorax swordsman into the mercenary Celtic warriors of RDI. So this is a pretty back and forth front line, uh, especially on this side of it. Over here, it's been pretty consistent. But I think Macedon is going to have to send up more troops here soon to uh, support this front. But the Spartan Hoplites, they're going to do a great job. Like I said, they're, they're almost at 100 kills. Again, those kills are low quality against Militiamen. But uh, nonetheless, they're doing decent. Doing decent. Love that little push there. Anyway, so let's go back over to the other side. Let's see what's happening here. Looks like they're just kind of setting up shop. And sure enough, they're, they're setting up some archers to fire on the flanks 
of the enemy. I don't know. They haven't opened fired yet, but it does look like they're positioning them to possibly get some flank fire on those Spartans. And that is the biggest weakness of Sparta. If it, Basically, if Sparta's not fighting head-on, uh, apply directly to the head. No, if they don't, if they don't fight head on, uh, they're in big trouble. If, if, oh, oh, yeah, that, that's also a problem. Wow, that unit just got melted right before our eyes. Ooh, I just maybe should have put like a, like a trigger warning there. That was brutal, and it's happening again. And there's not much they can do about it, really. Oh my gosh. I can't... There we go. They're finally starting to break. That's brutal. It... I mean, it... At least it's not Royal Spartans. You know? That's good. Now we've got the Marines charging forward. I think they've exhausted most of their ammo. I hope. And now we've got some Spartan Hoplites coming in. So a fresh unit of Spartan Hoplites. They're kind of moving up a little too aggressively here. This is classic uh, Sparta formation breakdown. This is what happens when they're trying to stay in formation and stuff. It just gets all funky. Uh, but if anything, that plays into the favor of the attackers. That, that formation's all or unorganized and a, a, a big mess. But yeah, uh, Sparta's here. Uh, and oh, nice little retreat in advance. I like that. Trying to get around the flank. They're basically trying to silence these Marines because they can rack up a lot of kills with their projectiles. So that's a good play right there. Also, we've got, uh, what are these? Some, ooh, some gorillas over here. They also have some uh, great Javi ability. And they're going to sit back. And look at them just like throwing like machines. I wish that, I do wish, it's almost robotic, you know? I wish the, the skirmishing was a little less precise in this game. A little more, you know, physics physic base and like when you have like an archer firing over these walls like say they're right here they're firing over these walls into like an enemy unit like perfectly it's like come on i wish there was like some sort of stat that when firing over obstacles the accuracy goes down you know what i mean that's kind of kind of oh my gosh these thorak javis man wow i mean they're not javis but they have javelins you know what i mean uh, unbelievable! Just, th just utterly shredding. This, uh, this, Sp and this is why Sparta is not a good faction. It's like, well, no, I mean, I win a lot of battles, and I, you know, Sparta always holds out to the bitter end. It's like, well, yeah, if you're playing against players that are new to the game or just don't know how to deal with Sparta, they can be pretty good, but. Sparta has a major flaw, and that is that they have no projectile capability. They're just kind of like sitting ducks. And that's what they were against the Thorax Swordsmen. Just utterly sitting ducks. And now they're pushing through the gaps, guys. And this front line is starting to crumble right here. So they're going to keep pushing in some Thorax Swordsmen. Macedon doing a great job, showing why Macedon conquered Sparta and, and Athens. Uh, well, Apollo, they just got finished fighting a war. They were weak. Yeah, I know. Anyways, doesn't matter. Anyways, here comes a charge of Thorax Swordsmen. And, uh, yeah. There's another unit of Thorax Swordsmen kind of setting up. I think what they're basically doing is just making sure nothing flanks. Just a little security blanket there. And then more... What are these? Thor oh, Th thorough spears i just call them thorough spears i know i'm mispronouncing them but you know what i mean they are they are one javi away from being a javelin unit they have so many javis there they go there they go oh wait they were gonna throw now they're cheering they're like yay you killed someone yay nice this is just really good play with these units here <sighs> I don't know. And then here comes, here we go. Here comes the charge. Again, using the militia hoplites to initiate the fights. They're going to absorb a lot of ammo. They're going to exhaust the troops. And that's going to make it easier. And then Thorax Swordsman, look at this. Yep. I'm going to do this all day. And there's nothing Sparta can do. Nothing Sparta can do. They're just sitting back, getting toasted. Getting melted. Look at the carnage here. Let's see how many lose. He's got 137. Here comes another volley. 
Ready? Let's wait until they're done throwing. And I'd say right there is good. 110. I know artillery just came in, but I think killed one guy. 110. And now they're at 103. It's just, it's insane. And you can't sit back and just get shot like that. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be tough. I mean, it's going to be tough to deal with. And it's just the, the nature of Sparta. They just have no, no, like, no sense of uh, projectile. You know what I mean? They're just kind of sitting ducks there. You got the, they got to be supported by some some sort of projectile support. Now we have RDI pushing in some uh, noble hoplites. They're gonna show the Spartans how it's done. I'm pretty sure like all hoplites don't have throwing capability. That's why hoplites are just kind of like poo poo. And oh my gosh, dude. The Spartan Hoplites once again just getting shredded. Now they have the 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 tower here. This is just playing perfectly in the in the attacker's gorilla boy's hands here. And they just gotta keep it up. I think, you know, just keep doing what they're doing in terms of the perspective of the gorilla boys. Just keep doing what they're doing. Take it slow. You know, keep chipping away at these Spartans. Cause here's the other problem with Sparta. Their units are uber expensive. Unless you get a full army of like cheap, low quality. Like if you want any sort, it's like, it's just, that's the thing with Sparta. They don't have a variety of like low tier, middle tier, high tier. It, it's either like low to like really freaking high, you know? Like their units are just really expensive. If you want variety of unit, uh, you know, different unit in, in terms of skill level. But they look awesome. You got to give them that. I mean, look at them. Damn. They look great. But yeah, they're going to keep fighting the good fight here. Um, Thorax Swords doing their... Look at this. They're just going to go right through the gap. I'm pretty sure these Thorax Spears, they have 80 kills. I'm pretty sure they've used up most of their ammo, and that's what you want. You want to make sure these Thorax Spears use up their ammo because they're decent fighters, but you want to make sure you get the most out of them. Uh, from far away because obviously you don't want throw spears dying when they have full ammo you know then it's just a waste of money and now we got some thorax swordsmen they've got some ammo and they're gonna just yep they're gonna just soften up these these hoplites oh geez and i'm sure once they're out of ammo they're gonna engage because lusitani is starting to break here and back over this way, uh, Macedon is continuously sending in more or Yeah, Macedon. Continuously sending in more troops. And guys, I don't know. You know, I'm starting to see this, and I, I'm wondering, where is, where is Lusitani? I, 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 I've seen a couple troops here and there, you know what I mean? But they've mostly just been chilling. I think they're just saving their troops for the, the late stage. I think they're going to let Macedon kind of lead the way, because Macedon has such great quality uh fighting troops and you know a lot of them have the project projectile uh, you know ammo so they can just kind of spearhead the assault and once things start to crumble send in lusitani to finish it up because lusitani is not the greatest of factions in fact they're um they're a plus two faction they're like they're pretty in, in the eyes of this tournament they're pretty crappy but if you know how to use them, they can be devastating. And here comes an opportunity to get these slingers. I don't think they're going to catch up to them. Here's the thing. They kind of have to... Ooh. Ooh. Nice little volley there. But they kind of have to keep up the pursuit because as soon as they turn around, these slingers can stop and sling. But they're not going to stop and sling. And now we're starting to see the elite core of the Spartan army, the heroes of Sparta. Got two units of heroes of Sparta. Headed over this way, and this is going to be a major moment here. And look at this. They've got this Spartan unit just surrounded, getting peppered down. Now this unit's going to... He's going to hold back reinforcements from Sparta. Hmm. This is tough. This Spartan unit is kind of wasted. It's, it's in a, such a bad spot, it's going to be outflanked. It's either going to get outflanked here or here. Even the, yep, or this unit's going to turn back and deal with it. Sure enough, the heroes of Sparta are going to pursue. 
And now they're gonna Oh, they haven't captured the tower yet. They're gonna get they're gonna go try to capture the tower. That's nice. Heroes of Sparta Heroes of Sparta go in and the fate of this battle kind of rel relies on their shoulder, on their you know, it's it's, it's up to them. Because over here, this has just been a kill zone for the def excuse me, for the defenders. Here comes more troops, some Marines pushing in. There they go. Very nice. It's tough to tell because the defenders, a lot of their troops are hidden, so I don't really know what they have left. But looking at this balance of power, it is not looking good, guys. And then RDI is continuously pushing forward here. He's got more no noble hoplites. Noble hoplites? <laughs> noble hoplites. They're going to try to push back these veteran shield warriors who are now going to fall back and get the rear of this RDI unit, which causes them to break. Sparta here holding, but... Uh, with the unit of hoplites at 76 kills. Not terrible. But let's hope that they can hold very long here. Because right now it's looking like if things keep going the way they are. The Gorilla Boys are going to end up with 11 points. Which is crazy. Back over here. Macedon is breaking to the Heroes of Sparta. The Heroes of Sparta are ex now experiencing the wrath of the archer core of Macedon. There we go. They're going to get shot in the back as they retreat, but they should be okay. They should, they can absorb ammo pretty well, but not with their backs turned. And they're completely falling back. Look at that. And that's the thing, guys. I haven't seen too much of a skirmish from the attackers. Maybe I've just missed it. Uh, you know, obviously, outside of the close-range skirmish, like with the, the the Javis, we've seen a lot of that. But I haven't seen a lot of archer play. But, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't. These archers have... Well, they have 72 kills. These guys have 46. This unit has 73. So, they've definitely been shooting. So, I think they've been shooting from... Yeah, see, this is why... Guys, this is why it's so deadly. This right here. See, and this is this is kind of the strat for this this map, is to not hold here, but to fall back and hold these two points here. Even though it's more to hold, what happens is that one, you can't get flanked, right from fire, uh, when you're holding back here. I mean, I suppose it's possible, but it's more difficult because obviously you're gonna hold right here as well. Right, so it doesn't get them that position where they're right on your flank firing at you. The other thing is that it opens up. This area is massive. It opens up, and you can have a lot of archers in this area not blobbed up. Where for the attackers, if they were to move up their archers and shoot at your archers, they're going to be kind of bottlenecked into this, this tight area, which makes it easier for your archers to land more hits and kill more enemy archers. So that's kind of the idea of this this area of defense is like fall back here here and here and uh do your best on on you know using your archers it's it's kind of like a bend but don't break strategy i think the defenders here have gone too they, they haven't been fluid enough with their defense and they're just breaking now they're just breaking to the might the lusitani macedonian alliance and more and more units are coming in. And I'm just looking at this. I think what we see right now is all the units left. I don't think the defenders have any more hidden units. And look at the bounce of power. It is so greatly in favor of the attackers at this point. It's going to be insanely difficult. Now, I will be honest here. Whenever I see bounce of powers like this. And if there's Sparta. For some reason, Sparta. Like, if you can get these heroes of Sparta to last until the very end fighting tired units and not having to deal with archer fire these heroes of sparta if they're in a good position they can turn battles around as long as they're not getting flanked as long as they're not tired and as long as they're not getting hit with uh with arrows they can turn these things around but i i don't know i don't know if i necessarily see that happening Here we go. Veteran shield warriors using their projectiles once again. 
We're starting to see Lusitani now enter the... And look at there's the archer fire. There's that flanking archer fire that has just been so devastating for this team. 110. We got 68, 69 giggity. But we're staying on this until it changes. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, they're out of ammo. Yo, 60... Oh, wait, no. They still have am ammo. Oh, they have 74 kills now. Okay. Well, so much for that. 112, 57 over here. 82 with the Thorax Swordsman. Uh, Spartan Hoplites over here with 54 kills. Yeah. Let's look at the uh, defending archers. 127. Not terrible with the Slave Slingers. Um, let's see this one. 45. Yeah. You can see who's been kind of winning the skirmish battle as well. That's definitely the attackers. And guys, Rome 2 is just a big skirmish. Like, Rome 2 might as well be with guns. Because, like, the amount of skirmishing. Like, the amount of jabbies and archers that are... That are util like, it's utilized in this game. The amount of utilization <laughs> is in intense. And if you don't have any capability of skirmishing you better have some genius big brain strategy because you are going to suffer and here we go this is kind of like the last hurrah for the rdi the noble hoplites yes here we go they are breaking Macedon, so good for them, but they've got a lot of fresh Lusitani troops to deal with. Yeah, Lusitani is kind of like the, the final punch, the, the, killing, the killing blow, so to speak. They've got a lot of their veteran shield warriors. You've yet to see any action. But here's the thing, guys. I, the Lusitani infantry is kind of poo-poo, and that's why they're, they're plus two faction. So if they can, if they can hold... Let's see, these heroes? Nice. If they can hold out and fight these guys head on, there might be a chance. They just gotta hope that they run out of ammo soon because these javelin men have been disgusting. Disgusting. Back over this way, they're gonna finish up these uh, Spartans who are desperately trying to hold on to this, hold on to this, uh, you know, this place, this tower. And we got some uh, companion cav looking for an opportunity here. And he's going to go all the way around. Even if he takes some shots from arrow towers, it's going to be worth it. Because it's going to force the defenders to have to peel a unit back and defend this back area. Which he's going to do with the general. Looks like both generals are defending the rear. What you're going to do? You look. He's like, he's totally unfazed. He's like, oh good, I get to die today. My Spartan dream. I get to die. Nice. I don't know. I get to die a warrior's death. What a beautiful death. Uh, so, yeah. They're going to push forward. Keep fighting the uh, Thoros Spears. Iberian Swordsmen just sitting back using their... This is what they're going to do. They're going to send up one unit. Kind of hold back the horde. And then just sit back and use their projectiles. Nice. They are breaking here. These Javelin men are breaking. So, good job there. Is that from the Spartan Archers or the Slingers? Very nice. Racking up some kills. 129. Over here, we've got the Arch. 143. So, very, very nice job. You definitely got to get the Cretan Archers when you're playing as Sparta. And you got to start popping some shots. And look at this column formation. They want to they move in and try to silence these uh, Iberian Swords. And they better hurry because they're getting pelted. Sure enough, they're going to just fall back, which is fine. He can try to use this opportunity to flank, but I don't think he's going to because then it expose him to a counter flank. I think he's going to try to go for the tower. Oh, no. Lusitani's not having that. Veteran shield war warriors have been called up. But, yeah, he's just going to chill back. There's no way he's going to. He might neutralize it, but he's not going to capture it. They're going for one big push. And they're starting to run out of troops here. The bounce of power, it looking like a cigarette. Which is not good for the defenders. Here we go. This is going to be big final push here. And I don't even think there's enough troops here. Because I think they could, they could probably get through the gap here. 
So what I would do is just engage. Send one unit around to flank. GG. Yeah, it's looking pretty grim for the uh, defenders. Yeah, they're going to force a fight with one unit. And then sneak through with this unit. Yep, there it is. There it goes. Like a snake. Going by. Look at they're they're not even gonna fight them. Oh, keep running, yeah. They're like, forget you, I'm going for the Yeah, now we got archers up, oh, but that's it. That right there, that's the nail in the coffin. This unit coming in. That's the nail in the coffin. There's no return from victory here. They're about to break over here. There's not much defending this section. And uh they're gonna try to hold with these heroes of Sparta. But it's just not going to be enough. Back over this way. Lusitani's just kind of... I think he's going to try to fall back and use his projectiles. Yeah, he's got to push in with these Royal Spartans. Cannot let him sit back and throw stuff at you. Now we got Cav coming in as well. I think he's going to look for a gap. Or he just might charge in. Look at this. Yikes. Yucky yikes. Very cool fight here, guys. It was a, um, I would say it was, it wasn't exactly close. It was pretty well ha handled by the Gorilla Boys. There's really no surprise. Uh, the Gorilla Boys are a very good team. Like I said, they made it to the finale in the last tournament, so they know what they're doing. Uh, the winged Wamsars, got to give a big shout out to them. They fought hard. You definitely could see it that they did the best they could. Um, I think it just came down to like, they just couldn't keep up with the. The, the projectiles of of the attackers. I think they made a, a, a mistake by trying to defend up here. Even though it looks enticing, like it looks good to kind of hold this small choke point. It's just that they gain, they gain control of this tower. They gain control of the gate house. So you're constantly being peppered by the tower. It's like it's like having extra archers fighting you. It's, it's very difficult. I think it would have been better for them to kind of fall back here and here. That way they wouldn't have been able to get flanked by the fire. So really good job by the Gorilla Boys taking advantage of this settlement uh, in their defense. Kind of taking advantage of that. Using the archers to clean up this mess. And uh, really just using, yeah, just using projectiles to defeat the Spartans. Which is exactly what you have to do. Also, you know, flank them. Get some archer fire on their side. All that kind of stuff. So... Really good job there with the use of uh, Archer skirmish ability. And that's basically what won them today. And so they're going to end up here today, guys, with 11 points. Now, that doesn't mean they're in the, the playoffs for sure. Um, you know, it's very possible that another team can pull off something similar. Plus, they win more or something. You know, that's very possible that they could uh, another team can pull this off. But... Uh, what you're going to see after this battle, guys, are uh, you're going to see the fight between Crimson Chickens and the um, Wolf... I think it's Wolf Gang? Wolf Gang or Wolf Pack? I think it's Wolf Gang. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Um, so you're going to see... You're going to see a nice matchup uh, of my team. Yeah, so get excited. My team's coming up next. Um, and uh, we'll see if, how the first round goes. Of course, that the time of this recording i've already played it so we'll see what happens um but i'm you know it'll be fun to kind of show what i did well what i did wrong and uh see what the outcome of our our group is remember we're group c and uh we got a tough right basically <laughs> we kind of know the gorilla boys are better for than us so we're basically just shooting for second place so we can just get into the playoffs and hope for the best. That's the plan right there. Um, but we'll see. You know, uh, we actually play... Well, we'll get into it later. But, um, but yeah, we'll see. Maybe when we play the Gorilla Boys, we can beat them, you know? Or, or even just trade. You know, win one, lose one. That would be pretty swell. But we'll see. Uh, but yeah, great matchup here. Great fight. And that's going to be a nice victory for the attackers. Let's go ahead and end the replay. Look at the results here. 
And woof, if you look at these archers, guys, they're not like insane kills. I've seen worse. I've seen where the archers have like two, three hundred kills. But that's still a good chunk of kills. Now keep in mind, these armies, are, look how small Sparta is. So a lot of these kills are high quality. Uh, and then we got uh, RDI. Who, uh, yeah, he did decent with the hoplites. It's not terrible. And some of these uh, marines did pretty well. 35, not very good. But, I mean, RDI did, de I, I don't know. It's just, I just feel like... I just feel like it was the faction selection. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. It's just a really good team. Really good team. And there are the kills. Ooh, 200 kills with the Scorpion. I didn't even see the Scorpion. Yeah, if they were able to, they should have brought a Scorpion as well. That's kind of the go-to. Scorpions are so nasty at breaking up defensive positions. And they also had the uh, Greek Ballista getting almost 100 kills. So there you have it, guys. That's game two. And that is going to end the matchup between Gorilla Boys and the Winged Wumsars. Uh, so Gorilla Boys end up with 11 points so far in the uh, in the tournament. And we'll see how many points they can rack up by the end of the grouping session before the playoffs. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this fight. It was a lot of fun. And like I said, don't forget to look out for my battle coming out soon. Not tomorrow, but the next day. Um, it should be coming out. So appreciate the support, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.